This is the world's first hydrogen-powered production car. Its name is already infamous among car fans and keen greenies, and yet it's so elusive that most of us have never even seen one. Its fuel is hydrogen, not fossil, and its only byproduct is water rather than carbon dioxide. The Honda FCX Clarity is already a hero amongst eco warriors, and appropriately, the first batch to be made was leased to people in California, where being green is as fashionable as being rich. Indeed, Jamie Lee Curtis, the actress, was one of the very first people to get her hands on one. The Clarity is driven by a 100 kilowatt electric motor that turns the front wheels, so really it's just an electric car. But the interesting part is how the car powers that motor. Hydrogen from the tank is pumped into the car, where it mixes with oxygen from the atmosphere in a fuel cell stack which is located just between the front seats. An electrochemical reaction produces electricity which powers the motor, which then powers the wheels, and what's left over is hydrogen, now mixed with the oxygen, which every schoolboy or girl will tell you is H2O, which is water. So this car has zero emissions. So it all sounds tremendous, but outside La La Land, where eccentric vehicles are so now, is it any use as a real car? Well, for starters, the figures add up pretty well. It's got four doors, it'll carry four adults, it's got 134 brake horsepower and 189 pound-foot of torque. It's also got a massive 171 litre high-pressure fuel tank that's got a range of 270 miles. Now compare that to Britain's most popular electric vehicle, the G-Wiz, and that grinds to a halt after just 48 miles. The Clarity also comes with a lithium-ion battery that acts as a support system to the motor, giving it an extra bit of thrust, so 0 to 60 happens in 10 seconds, and it'll go on to a top speed of 100 miles an hour. Now that battery also gathers up the extra energy created by engine braking. So if I take my foot off the throttle, the energy coming from the still turning motor is converted back into electricity and recharges the battery. All in all, it gives it an energy equivalent miles per gallon figure of a very impressive 81 mpg. Inside the cabin, the technology is just as clever as it is under the bonnet. The seats and carpets are made from something called biofabric, derived from fermented corn. The layout isn't too dissimilar to the current Civic, but it's got a whacking great big digital dial in the middle of the dash. On the left-hand side, it's an electricity gauge. On the right, a hydrogen gauge. And in the middle is a sort of 3D ball. So when it's small and blue, it means I'm driving very efficiently. But when it's bigger and yellow, it means I'm driving averagely. However, when it becomes really big and orange, it means that it's incandescent with rage and I'm using far too much hydrogen. When it comes to handling, it is identical to a conventional front-wheel drive car. It also rides very well and it's got great soundproofing. In fact, the only noise I can actually hear in this car is when I turn the windscreen wipers on. And when you run out of H, all you need to do is pull up at your local filling station, plug in a nozzle and wait for 171 litres of hydrogen to pass through your fingertips in a matter of minutes. Easy, right? Well, actually, that's where there are still a few problems. The FCX Clarity produces no emissions, but you still have to extract the pure hydrogen in the first place. So somewhere along the line, there are going to be emissions. In California, Honda has set up a station that uses solar energy to create hydrogen. So it's clean and super green. But California is always sunny. Birmingham, for example, isn't. So, despite there now being around 200 hydrogen filling stations worldwide, there are still some big question marks on how realistic a global hydrogen infrastructure would be. And parts would have to be cheaper too. Things like the high-pressure hydrogen tank and platinum used in the fuel cell means the FCX would be much more expensive than equivalent petrol or diesel-powered cars. But it's a hell of a good start. 
It's not as engaging as, say, a BMW 3 Series to drive, but it is comfortable, capable and, crucially, it's practical enough to be your one and only family car. It's also well packaged, and despite that whopping great big fuel tank, the boot is of a realistic size. The world may not yet be ready for hydrogen, but Honda is.